another part of myself or I'll see another part of myself or I'll figure something out or heal something by actually just going through that fear and doing the thing. Hello, hello, and welcome to In The Rising podcast. My name is Bettina Brown, and this is the platform I've chosen to talk about living a life that's in alignment with your hopes, your dreams, and your goals. And sharing stories with other people and sharing the stories of other people of how to walk into that fear and to know you're deservant of that very thing that you are excited about that makes you just want to hit the go button in your life. And learning to turn your back on the shame and blame game that does nothing for you. And my guest today is Jessica Johnson, who has done just that. And just with so much humility and excitement, shares her story on how she became a writer, a podcaster, and how she's helping other people fulfill their own dreams. So thank you so much, Jessica, for being part of In the Rising podcast and for sharing your time with me and with with everyone else out there. Thank you so much for that. Yes, my pleasure. Thank you. So I am really thrilled to talk to you because you have worked on things that are many the the goals of many people, right? My podcast is about how can you rise up from for many people, it's doing something they're uncomfortable with. And you had mentioned in one of your other podcasts that I listened to that becoming your own boss was one of those things that became more and more interesting to you. But before we get to that, you also had a degree in journalism and then went out to marketing. Share a little bit, like how did your, how was your interest in writing and the written word even started? Yeah. So, you know, ever since I was little, I think I, I loved to tell the stories either of things that I was learning or I would pay attention to the things that I heard other people talking about. And I love to be able to help them kind of articulate their story or, you know, dream bigger out of that. And so I always kind of had a notepad and pen with me when I was little. Um, So journalism and communications felt like a really natural career path for me um, through college and my training. And, you know, when I left uh, college, I went and got several positions in communications and marketing and those kinds of roles. But I was always so curious about entrepreneurship. I felt like I, it wasn't even really a word I that I was that familiar with years ago, but I was introduced to a few different people at networking events and was just fascinated by this concept that they could be their own boss and they could create something out of their own mind and heart and they could build a life where they had a lot more freedom to make it whatever they wanted it to become Um, Not that you can't in a corporate role at all, but just if there's, you know, the feeling if it speaks to you, right? Or if that's like a path that may be for you. Um, So I became very curious. And and at that point, for some reason, it did not even occur to me that writing could be the path. I thought Mm -hmm. I had to go get a certification in another passion of mine and, and maybe build something out of that. So it was a little bit of a winding journey where I first got certified in nutrition and health and wellness and thought, that's what I'll do. I'll be an entrepreneur in that field. And as much as I loved the client relationships, and that's always a part that I enjoy, I just started to feel like I gravitated towards the days when I could be more creative and I could do the writing about those topics again. And so eventually I started to think, I wonder if instead of coaching, I could somehow do like a writing business around wellness and health. And so that led me into freelance writing. Um, Once that grew, I built an agency. And then now kind of I found my way of, I think, best of all worlds where I get to do the writing. I get to mentor other writers and how to build their own profitable freelance businesses um, and get to just you know, build a business where I get to share about the things that I love. So a bit of a journey, but you know, that was kind of how I found my way here. And thanks for sharing that because I think a lot of us feel pressure that this journey has to be a straight arrow and that success is a straight arrow. And it's not, it can be, you know, going from one thing and realizing that the gifts that you have may very well be all you need, learning how to look at them differently 
right? You didn't think about the writing and creative part with that. And so thank you so much for sharing it. And I liked also how you talked about, you know, building your own business and having, you know, the time that you want. Share a little bit more because I think sometimes when we think of having our own business that we think that we have all this time at first Mm -hmm. and the startup and the end up are not the same. Um, Share share some about your startup struggles um, that in hindsight, you're like, oh, that that was different than I thought. (laughs) (laughs) For sure. So yeah, a few things stand out to me for that. So one is the part of the struggle, I think, is that especially in the beginning, there's so many roles that come without pay. So you're wearing so many hats and you're trying to build a social media following and send out an email newsletter and create an opt-in. So you even have people to email and build the relationships. And, you know, I would do speaking events. And I mean, I did so many things just to get my name and business out there. I like once catered a hundred person event when I don't have a catering kitchen, I don't know how to cater anything. So, but it was just that hunger of, let me figure this out. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of one part of the time challenge is just where do you even spend it? And, Mm -hmm. you know, I had a certain amount of savings that I had saved up for my entrepreneurial journey, but you do feel that pressure of getting close in that or using it when you need to. And, and then the other part about it is once I started to actually gain some traction and book full with clients through a coaching model, I kind of felt like I was winding right back to that corporate feeling of being on back-to-back calls all day, every day, and really confined to one time zone, you know, or else I'd be taking calls at midnight And so that's kind of what also led me back to content writing, because for both of those reasons, I found I could write and get paid. You know, if I was corresponding with a client via email or calls, I was getting paid for that time. I didn't feel like I had to do as much marketing um, publicly because I could directly connect with a prospective client and start working with them versus building this online following for years and years. Mm -hmm. So those were some of the struggles and and where it led me. And another thing that I would almost look back on and share with anyone else who's feeling this pressure around the timing for their entrepreneurial journey is I think that I had so much kind of self-imposed pressure that I should be more successful than Mm -hmm. I was on a certain timeline. And now I look back and I'm like, man, that, that was no amount of time, you know? And, and like, I have so many more conversations now with people and I just really, I think, have more of a perspective of like, if anyone feels like they should be further along, it just, it takes time and like, that's okay. And certain business models may help and get you there faster or, you know, simpler or more directly, but also kind of just giving yourself the grace of that. You're probably a lot further along than you think you are. And even you being in the game and showing up and putting yourself out there is so like noble and honorable and brave. And I just, I kind of look back at early entrepreneurial me or anyone else in that same position. And I'm just like, you're good. You have so much time. Like it takes longer than you think. And no one's talking about that either. So it's all, it's all okay. <laughs> and and thanks for sharing that too, with the time that it takes. And I think I was listening to someone this morning, listening to their podcast. And he's like, you know, the first one I started, the first project I worked on didn't it didn't do well the second one didn't the third one didn't (laughs) and they're all different versions like we have an idea of what we really work but you also change when you identify with what your values are today and that can take some time and um and I think also viewing it all as that an investment in learning is essential you can't you can't skip that step by any means. You can't. And it will so help. I mean, that's why even when I built my content business and that's why it grew to an agency so quickly because I had all that learning capital in that first business and in trial and error and in figuring it out. And so whether it's investing in a mentor or just in your own education, it's like that, that will serve you. Like every experience will add up to serve Mm -hmm. you. It's just, you know, it's, it's part of the process really. You can't skip that. Like you say, you cannot, you (laughs) cannot. And I, I know what you offer is so important for people who are working to build their program. Share more about the agency. 
where did that come up? You know, where did the name come up from? And then yeah. like, what does that really entail? Yeah. So on the agency side, um, what I found is that I quickly got a lot of content work. And so I kind of had to make the choice. Do I either, am I booked full um, or do I build a team and could this become bigger? And so I started, I decided that I would try and I decided I liked the idea of bringing other people in. And I knew other writers who were entrepreneurial and wanted to build their own business. And so I thought, well, I have overflow work here. And so kind of just started to bring in a team of writers and editors that way. And, and then really, really found that I loved that mentorship side. Mm -hmm. And so that's what eventually led me to create an entire program for anyone who doesn't necessarily want to work under an agency or my agency, but wants to actually be the business owner themselves where I'm like, Oh, okay. Here's how to get clients. Here's how to write. Here's the thing brands are looking for. Cause I've been on that corporate side and I've been on the freelancer side. So it's been this kind of evolution, but I mean, both of them are so fulfilling to me in kind of their different ways. Mm -hmm. And you also mentioned that you have this program, you're helping people become content writers because we want to, you know, you have it on your website, you have to stop the scroll that we have the attentions of squirrels <laughs> that, you know, there's so much, and I don't know where I heard this quote from, and it may not even be that much that we literally are, are bombarded with 10,000 different images per day or, you know, branding that we don't recognize when we pass that um, fast food place, we see the symbol. It is still in going in somewhere. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's, it's not, um, it's not unintentional. There is an intent and <laughs> right. you're really looking for attention. When someone's looking to, to help build this program and they're like, okay, I don't want to just a library of logins with all these different courses. How is yours different or how can I learn from you specifically? Yeah. So for me, what I found is I wished that I would have had this path for you know, one, like how to do the writing and content strategy side. I learned it through a lot of years of, you know, journalism training and working in corporate and, and, but I still didn't see that that was a path to a business. Like I mentioned, I mean, I tried a whole different business model at first. And so I thought, man, if anyone else is in corporate and they're wishing that they could be their own boss or find more fulfillment creatively or have a little bit more freedom location or schedule wise, content writing is such a great way to do that. And I thought, but not everyone knows the writing side. And mm -hmm. so week by week, I teach that for anyone, even if they're brand new. And I also teach the content strategy side. So things like SEO, for example, mm -hmm. because that to me is what really enabled me to begin earning higher rates from the start. So I could replace a corporate salary. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an important part of the puzzle of learning both of those. And so that's kind of one side is like content writing, content strategy, you learn it week by week. But then on the other side, I want people to be able to actually have a business when they're done with this. And so week by week, there's a different strategy for how to get clients and it's exactly the steps to take. And it's the pitches that you can use that are proven to get clients. And mm -hmm. so one of the things that I love so much is so many of my students, when they apply those steps, they get those first consults and clients, even when they're in the program and they'll post messages like I got my first paying client and you know, they're only like weeks in. So the, the goal then is that they can really have the foundations to continue to scale that business, whether they want it to be another income stream, their full-time business as their own mm -hmm. boss, um, whether they want to grow a team and have it be a big thing one day. So kind of can, they can choose their own adventure there, but really I think that it's everything that you need to build a content business. Even if you're a brand new writer and are just looking to learn from the ground up the skills mm -hmm. of writing and then how to actually get clients too. Yeah. And Writing is, is a lot of fun, but you know, there is something, there's work to it. It's not just putting mm -hmm. words on the paper and you have to be engaging and pull to people's emotions and desires or fears. And, you know, having to put all that into writing takes effort and it takes skill and it's mm -hmm. not something you can just sit down and, and yeah, you can sit down and write, but there is a difference. You want that same time that you sit down and write to be more effective 
And so that you're not wearing every hat where most of us do have to start and (laughs) that you can start outsourcing other things. So you can do those, those creative pieces more often. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, It's strategic and especially Mm -hmm. writing for businesses. So a lot of my students will go and they'll write, you know, partner with a business and help them write their blogs or social media or guides and eBooks. And that's why that strategy I think is so important because businesses have this intention when they write where it's not like a journal entry, you know, where they're like, there's a certain purpose. And so to me, it's a good mix of that left brain, right brain, where you get Mm -hmm. to be creative, especially if it's an industry that you like or have a lot of expertise in. Um, And if not, that's okay too. You can, you know, learn how to research anything, but also you have to kind of be strategic. And like, like you say, use certain voice um, that matches the brand or think through what the goal is, whether it's getting new sales or new leads or things like that. So it is definitely more than, more than just um, (laughs) sitting down and kind of letting your thoughts pour out. But it's also, I always think too, it's different for me than writing like those college essays and papers. I always try and tell people that where I'm like, this is like a more fun writing. It's not like you're just sitting up burning the midnight oil and it's 20 pages of, you know, something that you have to write. I'm like, choose the industry you like, choose something that you could talk all day about or that you already research online at home, you know, and that makes it a lot more fun and fulfilling. But there's some fuel, there's some fire there, you know? Yes, yes for sure. You also have a podcast, the Bright Life podcast that you call your project, um, your pro- your passion project, and you share nuggets of inspiration and their entrepreneurial journey. And you have 80 some episodes now. Is that correct? Yeah, it's pretty Congratulations. Wild. Thank you. <laughs> just chipping away week by week. It's amazing how fast it, it adds up just that little bit. And that is really amazing. And you have one podcast episode um, where you talk about overcoming these inner blocks around visibility. And I really like that one because, you know, when to rise up and to show up for your audience, if it's your name or it's your emotions or it's your face like ours is right now, you have to be visible out there. How do you feel your own journey throughout your entrepreneurial um, rise, your, your journey through that has made you more visible to help you kind of keep those blocks at bay yourself? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely an area that I'm constantly unwinding new pieces of, but I mean, in the beginning, especially I was even the podcast, I probably sat on that podcast idea for a year and a half because I was, I could not even imagine putting the first episode out there. I was so nervous. What will people think? My friends and family will hear this and kind of the same thing with my social, you know, my, uh, businesses with social media, being nervous about posting, um, Mm -hmm. you know, being vulnerable, things like that. And, you know, I don't have all the answers there, but I feel like my approach has just been almost to run directly into the fear because I just trust that there's something on that on the other side of it for me. Mm-hmm. So I kind of pay attention to that whenever there's a fear that just feels like something o- over there I want, but I have to go through it. I now kind of really not like relish in it because it's not fun in the moment, but I know the wisdom in it. And I know that like mm-hmm. I will become another part of myself or I'll see another part of myself or I'll figure something out or heal something by actually just going through that fear and doing the thing. And it also becomes less scary. You know, you start to learn your own patterns around that. And now I put a podcast episode out and I don't think twice really, you know, I'm grateful for everyone who listens and it's, it feels like my heart, but I don't worry as much as I did those first few episodes, what people will think about it, you know, as much. So you kind of just start to learn that the fear comes and it rises and then it also dissipates, but Mm -hmm. that happens from continually showing it that you will show up and go through it either way. Yeah. Yeah. That the fear is there, but, um, where it comes from being a brick wall, it's more just like tissue paper. It's still there, but it knows, and you know, you're going to go through it. And, (laughs) um, and that shrinks the fear metaphorically instead of blocking you completely. It's like, (gasps) Oh, I got to go, you know, exactly. and then it's like, yeah, I put the podcast out and realized I didn't even think about it. I just, I just scheduled it. You know, of course yes. I did that time of day. <laughs> so, yes. Anyway. 
I yes. love that, that visual that you gave. You're right. And the fear builds unless you face it. It just, it just keeps growing and becomes so much more than it really is. Yeah. So you're so right. Just kind of going through it. And it's like, we're going to do it either way. So <laughs> better sooner than later. Sooner than later. Don't add bricks to it. It's strong yeah. enough as it is. <laughs> And yeah. you have a lot out there. You have your training program, you have your agency, you have your podcast. What would you say, Jessica, that's still on the rise for you? Like what, what are some mm -hmm. hopes or aspirations that you enjoy or look forward to? Yeah, I think that the biggest one for me that I've always wanted to do is to write a book. So that's my next one. I think that um, just feels really like near and dear to my heart. So I have and I have, you know, ideas and kind of will jot things down here and there, but you almost maybe even with entrepreneurship or rising into your next evolution, sometimes you feel like you have to let it marinate a little bit or yes. piece together and just <laughs> sit in your brain. And then eventually you're like, okay, I got it. So I'm kind of in that stage where I don't feel like I'm ready yet, but it for sure, I think is something I want to accomplish one day. Wonderful. Well, gosh, Jessica, thank you so much for your time today and sharing your story. It's 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 been interesting, it's been enlightening, and I'm I'm very grateful for your perspective on on many different topics. I thoroughly enjoyed my conversation with Jessica. She just oozes energy and excitement, and I was really grateful for her sharing her own story and that we don't just feel successful in an arrow that sometimes the very thing that we're doing is what we're supposed to do. We don't have to do something else because, well, that might be the thing right now. What you are passionate about and your gifts are your way into your joy. So I really encourage you to share this episode. If you know someone who would benefit from listening to it, it does so much to put this podcast in the hands and ears of those that it makes a difference for. And so I welcome you to do that. And I ask you to do that. I also ask you and invite you to leave a review of this podcast. It does, again, so much to broaden the horizons and the scope of the potential listeners that it can make a difference for. Every story matters. And my goal is to get that out. So thank you so very much for your time. Because you know what? Time is that one thing we don't get back. So I'm very grateful for yours. And until the next time, let's keep building one another up.